शक्ति म्यूट रिकॉर्डिंग है स्टार्टेड कार्तिक प्लीज म्यूट माय माइक देख ओके सो हेलो एवरीवन um welcome to android study jams uh, session 4 so uh, we apologies for the long break in between uh because we had our um, uh oe exams uh for which we needed uh, adequate preparations so we, this long break won't happen again because uh, will be able to complete the sessions before our semester starts so it's going to be continuous uh with every weekend so uh, don't miss any session please do join so without any further ado let's proceed next slide please next slide please yeah so in today's uh, schedule we are going to learn about fragments navigation intents life cycle and logging uh some life cycle mistakes life cycle library and configuration changes so this is a very uh basic but a very important aspect of android that you'll need to learn uh that is fragments and intents navigation is uh, is a component that is inherent when you learn fragments because uh, it helps you to move from one fragment to the other part and life cycle uh, uh refers to activity and fragment life cycles uh that you will be encountering um very soon so let's proceed next slide yeah okay fragments so a fragment represents a behavior or a portion of user interface in an activity you can uh, combine multiple fragments in a single activity to build a multi pane ui or you can use or you can reuse a fragment in multiple activities okay like you can think of a fragment as a sub activity that you can also use in other activities um okay to explain it properly um android came up with the concept of fragments because um with different screen sizes the app the behavior of the app must be must change so let's say if you have the gmail app in your phone will be a simple app and you'll be able to uh, uh, see the screen but then when you have a tab you can have uh, a navigation bar in the left that will show you all the bunch of the mails another bar in the bottom that will give you specific actions like star delete archive or move to a folder but then you won't be able to find all this in the normal mobile app and in, a, in an app with small screen sizes uh and if based on the uh, i mean orientation of the screen whether it's horizontal or vertical the app will mean the display of the app will also change accordingly so to incorporate all of these different uh, functionalities into a single thing they came up with the concept of fragments because uh, building uh, multiple activities uh, just for this simple function is redundant and it it and it's absurd it's not a good practice uh, in android actually specifies that um, I mean it actually uh it recommends you guys to have only one activity in your app and uh, use multiple fragments to keep switching between your UI components so fragments is very important and uh, it's actually very easy and it makes your app really lightweight and uh, it helps you focus on what you want to do uh, rather than waste time building unnecessary activities based on screen sizes and all okay so a fragment has its own life cycle 
and it receives its own input events you can add or remove a fragment while the activity is running uh, but then you can't uh, keep mm, uh, toying around with activities right so this is a very cool feature um a fragment is defined in a kotlin class and the ui for it is defined in an xml layout file so i'll just um present and i'll show you how a uh, fragment looks like so shakti uh, yeah sure so let's start presenting here yeah Yeah, are you able to see my? Are you able to see Android Studio? Yes, ma'am. Cool. Okay. So let's just look at this basic uh, thing called title fragment. As you can see, it's just it's a Kotlin class, and uh, what is this? yeah i just ignore that error we'll look into that later look over here so it's just a class called title fragment which inherits this um, the a uh, base class fragment now inside this you have the function called on create uh, as you have it for activities also but then what this does is it uh, when the fragment starts this function will get fired and you have the same uh, arguments uh, inflator container and staved instance state now inside this we are using data binding so we are calling a binding object uh, and then we are inflating it with the fragment title binding we are sending the parameters inflator and we are sending the layout what it needs to inflate r dot layout dot fragment title that's over here let me just show the split part yeah so you have and then container container is the view group and attached to parent false now so just ignore the other part of the code just don't look at this right now what this only like what this piece of code does is once the fragment is created it's going to show this um, this screen in your uh, activity page like inside main activity this is going to be presented uh the code for this is uh, pretty simple you have a layer you can see you have the layout tag to mention that this is data binding and then you have a constraint layout in which you have a button over the bottom and image view on the top this is just pretty straightforward so we are just uh, saying that the width is zero height is 122 margin starts here margin ends here and then we are adding a bunch of I mean we are adding a bunch of constraints we are adding a source so this is straightforward so what this uh, fragment I mean what on create does is it's going to inflate your activity with this xml file that's it so let's continue now the next thing that you are going to uh, learn is um, navigation so let's do that now okay so to when you, like okay like when you have multiple activities and when you have multiple fragments i'll stop presenting yeah when you have multiple fragments you will have to define a navigation path between all the fragments so that uh, the app goes according to your uh, 
the app the flow of the app is maintained properly like let's say uh, once you have the login screen you'll have to go to the home screen and based on the choices that he clicks on the home screen you'll have to go to the next screen so on uh, the path you'll have to define it using uh, navigations in android like to implement uh, app flow we use the concept called navigation so to add navigations you need to add uh, navigation dependencies so you'll have to um, go to your i'll present just hold on a moment yeah can you see my screen yes yeah. no. yes okay Oh, no, this is not. Hmm. So, yeah, you are applying the plugin Android X. Uh, no, no, not that. Where is this? Yeah, you are implementing Android X at navigation and navigation fragment, and then you are also implementing navigation UI. so you need to add these dependencies in your gradle file to start using navigations okay this is very important if you don't do this your app won't work so and then there's this part called hmm ext oh here you need to mention the navigation version 2.3.1 over here so two dependencies uh in the gradle uh, build dot gradle of android trivia that is project android trivia you need to add the navigation version in the build dot gradle for the app file you need to add the implementations both these things uh navigation fragment ktx and navigation uh, ui ktx once you're done with that you can add a navigation graph to the project just right click on the res folder that is over here uh just go to new let's say directory directory no just hold on no new one sec guys android resource file yeah android resource file yeah you can mention the file name over here and uh, and down like uh about resource type you can put, uh, select navigation you can just uh, click on the name and then you'll you'll be able to set the resource file just make sure that you put it uh, neatly into a, fo a, fo a folder called uh, navigation so you'll be able to see this thing now let me just zoom in over here so your app uh, once your main activity starts your it's going to open with your title fragment from the title fragment and when you click on the button play it's going to go to game fragment once that is done uh, based on your answer you are going to go to either game over fragment or game one fragment that's over here so you'll be having three questions over here once you answer all the three questions properly you'll go to game one fragment if you get anything wrong you'll go to game over fragment and once both of that is done let me zoom out you'll get an option to play next match and next match will take you back to the questions you have two other uh, fragments over, over here the rules fragment and the about fragment that you will be able to see with the navigation hamburger icon when you click on that it will open a navigation bar on that when you click on about you'll be able to see about and when you click on rules you'll be able to see rules now over here you have these arrow marks right so these arrow marks uh, is where you define the app navigation in this file so it's going to start with title fragment and when you click on this uh, 
circle and when you drag uh, what you need to do is you need to click on this button the add new destination and then you select from these layouts and then you add a new uh, fragment over here you name the fr uh, fragment appropriately once you're done with that, you click on the circle button and then connect these two. When you add a connection, it means that there's an action flowing from this fragment to this fragment. That's it. You're done. It's as simple as that, creating a navigation. You have something called uh, conditional navigation based on, uh, let's say, like uh, there's this game over fragment and game one fragment. When you get all these uh, right, You'll have to go to game over fragment. Oh, yeah. When you get uh, any one question wrong, you need to go to uh, game over fragment. So you can uh, let me click over here. No, look here. Actions. Yeah. So from game fragment, go to game over fragment. That's the definition of here and game one fragment will also have the same from here to here. And the code for this will be present in the uh, game fragment. The Kotlin file. Yeah, look here. Where is it? Yeah, based on the submit buttons click listener we'll have. Now, if it's not Mm, yeah, we are going to check with uh, with the number of questions answered. Uh, if it is zero, we are going to click on question. I mean, question index plus plus that will go to the next question. Once uh, then, we are going to check if the question index is less than the number of questions. Then take a question from the question index, set it, show the question, uh, and then this is the part for the game implementation logic. Once once this condition fails, that is once you are done with all the questions, you, we're going to go to the else part. Uh, where your else part, what it's going to show is, that is if you get all the questions right, you are going to go to the game one fragment. Look over here, you dot find nav controller, navigate to game fragment direction, start action game fragment to game one fragment. We're passing these values, num questions and question index. Now, if, if, uh, if any question is wrong, like you answered something wrong, then a uh, view.find nav controller will go will, will navigate to a game over fragment. So the you define the navigations in the navigation.xml file and you write the code in the game fragment.kotlin file. That's it. So and then once you are done over here, you'll you'll have to go back to game fragment and uh, for try again or next match. So these arrow marks define the same. So that's it about uh, navigations. The next interesting part, like look at the code labs, please uh, look at the code labs. You'll have a much in-depth understanding with the proper step-by-step -step instructions as to what each of these methods mean. Mm. Where is it? Yeah dot navigate find nav controller you'll have a proper uh, explanations of all these methods the reason i'm not explaining step by step is that you'll have to the the only way to remember uh, android is uh, to build apps on your own you'll have to take you'll have to uh, play with code and you'll have to get your fingers dirty this is not like um, where I teach you stuff you remember and you build an app. That's not how it works. You'll have to get your hands dirty. So I will only be giving you an overview of the concepts. You'll have to do the code labs and then learn. Like we will be willing, we are ready to help you. Uh, if you need any help, please just ping us on Discord. Um, and uh, whoever's free will respond to your doubts and queries right away. So let's go to intents. So the next topic, uh, let me just stop presenting. Shakti, uh, could you present? Uh, yes, Ram, one second.
once again, uh, let me check it. Uh. Yeah, so we're back to intents. Now, um, I have told you how to, what navigation means, right? Like if you want to move from one fragment to the other fragment, you're going to implement navigations. Let's say you have multiple activities in your app. So to move between uh, activities, you use the concept called intents. Uh, implicit, in, you have two types of intents, implicit and explicit. And uh, implicit intents help you to move inside your app. Like from, let's say, um, how do you, you have like uh, three activities, uh, let's say home activity, uh, like main activity, and then you have your uh, title activity, and then you have your play activity. So from home, when you click on a button, let's say you'll have to go to your title activity. To implement this, you need to uh, call an intent to your uh, home yeah, home activity in your title activity. So when you click on the button, the intent will fire and you'll be sent to the other activity. That's how this works. So an intent is uh, properly defined as a simple message object that is used to communicate between Android components. So there are two types of intents, implicit and explicit. You can send a message to a specific target using an explicit intent. With an implicit intent, you initiate an activity without knowing which app or activity will handle the task. So explicit intents means uh, we will be literally telling, okay, use, I mean, do this, uh, send these values to this particular activity. You will tell the name. But then when, when you look at implicit intent, sometimes when you click, I mean, WhatsApp, I mean, uh, let's say your friends send you a bunch of uh, PDFs in WhatsApp to you. You have multiple PDF viewing uh, applications in your phone, like Drive PDF Viewer, Adobe PDF, uh, WPS Office, uh, Moon Reader if you are into books or other such apps. Now, when you just say, uh, when you just send an intent, when you click on the PDF, you'll be given a choice, right? Uh, uh, using which app do you want to open this uh, this document? Now that choice will be given to you when you use an implement, Im implicit intent because you won't specifically tell Android to open the uh, PDF file using a particular uh, application. You do this because you don't know uh, what, uh, let's say you have Moon Reader on your phone and you prefer having uh, you prefer reading PDFs in Moon Reader, but then uh, let's say my friend Shakti doesn't read books and he doesn't have a Moon Reader on his phone. Now, if I handle opening PDFs in my uh, uh, chat application, if I uh, if I handle it using explicit intents, if I say open it using Moon Reader, and I send it, and Shakti and me have the same app on each, I uh, mean our phones, and if I send a PDF to him. And if he clicks on it, his uh, phone won't be able to handle that PDF because he doesn't have Moon Reader on his device. So to overcome this problem, you you can just use an implicit intent where the user will given the uh, will be given the choice as to what um, app will have to handle the opening of that PDF document. Yeah, so each implicit intent must have an action that describes the type of thing that uh, that is to be done. Uh, you have uh, some common actions like action view, action edit, and action dial. All these are uh, uh, constants that are uh, defined in the intent class. So action dot send will. Uh, help you to send a message uh, using an intent. 
so you can send um, any sm small piece of information to you can share that information when you use this um, a constant called action sent now let's say you have to send some data to another activity or um, another activity in your same app or you need to send data to another uh, send data to another application itself from one app to other the other so you can use this method in the intent class called put extra so what it does is you can while the I mean put extra not only uh, transfers content I mean uh, control from one app to the I mean one activity to the other activity it also takes a bunch of data and then transfers that to the other activity so that is the use of the method put extra so put extra can be uh, the you have a bunch of arguments for put extra and it there, it's an overloaded method so just look into it uh, it's it's very easy you'll be able to get the hang of it all you have to do is just call the intent object dot put extra of what you want to I mean to which uh, activity you're going to send name of that comma and then your message so your message you can get it from some place or you can just pass it pass the value using quotes okay so that's all guys that's all about intents that's pretty much it now all these activities that you created and uh, all these fragments that you created they need to be managed let's say once you complete uh, okay once you completed your sign in page let's say you have an app and you implemented a sign in page once you created the sign in page you will not go back to that page when you're using the app again right so it you can deallocate all that memory present in your uh, phone inside your memory like inside your ram uh, your ram will still hold uh, your uh, uh, ram will still hold the data that was present in your sign in fragment or activity you can deallocate all that um, to learn how to do all that you need to uh, know about activity and fragment recycling that my friend shakti is going to take over now so shakti continue yeah okay so before i start am i audible here yes sir okay. yeah yeah you're audible okay good so um, good morning um, good evening so uh, we are going to start with uh, life cycles uh, before I explain what life cycles are, I would like to illustrate. I would like to demonstrate one application. Once again, let me let me present that. Uh, let me present my phone here. Okay. Uh, one second. Good. Um, I think everyone can see my phone screen, right? Yeah. Can you yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Okay. Now here, there's this interesting application. It's in, uh, it's, it's in Code Labs too. Now this interesting application, a desert clicker. So you could see a good interface where you could see a cupcake. The desert will change every time you open the phone here. Uh, one thing you can notice is when you when you click the desert, like the the money increases. Yeah. So yeah, the, the this thing is actually cool. So every time you click a desert, it it implies that it has been sold and the amount, the amount to earn as like the amount to earn increases good but this one weird thing which we actually notice when we use the phone if we tilt the phone like for example like horizontally you could notice that the the the, the desserts have sold and the money has been lost so this this I mean, to understand what went wrong here and to correct these type of errors we have to look at something called as life cycles so uh, let me start with the life cycles here. One second. Um, yeah. So let me present the screen. Good. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah. I think uh, everyone can see my screen, yeah. Would uh, I need a verbal response? Can everyone? Yeah, see yeah, it? yeah. We can see a screen down. Oh, okay, fine. So, um, okay. So you might have heard of many cycles, like water cycle, rock cycle, and blah blah blah, uh, in in schools and college days. Uh, this the life cycle is similar to similar to those. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, butterfly is life cycle. Just an example. Like you have an egg, then go to a caterpillar or larva, then pupa, then. a completely free butterfly and then it will die unfortunately so uh, similarly like whenever you create an activity there are some things that actually occur here so uh, the activity gets initialized the activity gets created the activity gets started the activity gets resumed and and it will it'll stop it'll it'll get destroyed etc so we'll yeah uh, we'll just uh, yeah, i mean we'll just go through this uh, let me present my android studio here so here uh, here's the here's the code for the app which you see which you saw just now okay now this is the main activity file here um, yeah now before we start anything i mean uh, before we start anything we can see like uh, you now there are there are some things which happen so when you actually open an application like i'll okay, let me clear this thing and when sorry Yeah, you know, you know, there's some there's an option called logcat here. So what does logcat does is basically it will just um, it'll tell you what and all ha- what and all is happening in the background. So when you when your app runs, it'll say like it's assumed that like main activity is called or main activity opened and etc. etc. Like that. So before before uh, before starting, so here there are something called once again yeah, like, yeah. so there's one thing called as. Um, So here, this uh, this method called as on create, as we saw in each and everything here. Here, now, now in generally in programming lang in when you write uh, basic computer program, if something goes wrong, um, we guys have a tendency to include print statements here and there to make sure like to find the error where it goes. So similarly, we can do that here. So for that, what we have to do, this is code called log, like with a capital L, log dot. now there are multiple uh, multiple code here so log dot for example i'll go log dot i then bracket then there is something called as tag uh, when you have uh, tag is something that you use for your own reference so for example you generally the reference will be the class name the so main activity and main activity comma and the message what what, what you actually want to print so this is a log or uh, this is some info so again there are multiple things so log dot uh, v so this is another uh, this is another thing um th- these are to i mean uh, the log dot i log dot log dot i i stands for info here v stands for verbose here so and then log dot e uh, we also have log dot e log dot w which stands for error and warning respectively now the purpose of these uh, i mean the purpose of this uh, once again so the purpose of this is uh, to like to like uh, to illustrate like mean to the I mean, these messages the string the, the the message the second argument will get printed in the log cat here Good. this this uh what was and i'll go i'll give one more thing log dot v P uh, main activity. So uh, again, unfortunately, it takes some time to build again. We'll check it. Okay. So ah uh, yeah, back to life cycles. So gen, uh, I mean, ah uh, we'll uh, un- I mean until the build is running, we'll discuss about life cycles. So generally, ah uh, when you uh, when you actually see what ha- I mean, yeah. Once again, yeah, I'm sorry. So, anyways, yeah, they, they mean the the run is complete. Now here on the in the on create method, they I have included three stuff like log dot i log dot v. Uh, sorry, two log dot v. So I have to change this to log dot e. Anyways, I have to run again then. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, 
Uh, anyways, we have been discussing about life cycles here. So uh, now life cycles is kind of like that. Assume that you okay. Now consider a real life situation. You sleep in the night. You wake up in the morning. You get ready and you go outside somewhere for work or for recreation purposes. So those are kind of like the stages that you go through. So sleeping and inside the house and inside the I mean outside the house, etc. Good one, so let me check it. So again, now here since the build has succeeded, uh, now since now there will be three uh, messages that can be printed. So check uh, capital I slash uh, main activity. You guys can see the message here. So this is some info. So this is how you actually uh, I mean, you include a log message here. So the log message is for your purpose for debugging purposes. And uh, again, so for verbos, like type B. So this is a verb box and for e uh, you can see that this is an error that message is printed in red so it's a highlight uh, it's an error here so so that's how you do, you do a log i mean uh, that's how you that's how you log messages in this uh, it is coming back life cycle so uh, you can see that you yeah you either sleep or you go to you you wake up you are inside the house and you I mean you go to I mean you go outside the house etc so generally, each time when you go from one each when each time when you go from one step to another, that means for example, when you when you I mean when you go I mean when you leave the house, uh, you have to wear a mask. So that is kind of an instruction that that's an instruction that is followed every time whenever you leave the house. So similarly, we are going to deal like the when I say when I say life cycle, we are going to say how how the activity how the application behaves when when the app is uh, opened for the first time, when the app uh, when the app is minimized or when you press the home screen when you when you press the back screen and uh, when you when you use an intent so what happens there and so so now here what happens is that whenever you whenever a life cycle changes like for it whenever life cycle changes so assume that when you open uh, so first when you actually create uh, first when you when you open the application for first time this activity uh, the I mean the method on create I mean the activity on create is in on create will be called so whatever so when you're happening uh, when you're opening application for the first time this method will be uh, created one and whenever now then what will happen after after opening the on create then the on start will happen and then the on on resume will be invoked so the in the messages will be invoked in this order I'll let me just illustrate it I'll remove these three logs here I, okay so once again, good. So again, so when whenever I open an application here, you guys can see first. Uh, okay, let me this app again. Okay, good. So whenever now I have start open the application here. So whenever I open the application, first the on create method is getting called. Okay, there's this there's application there's this thing called Timber. Timber is a library which can be which can also be used to create uh, the this one. I'll we'll actually we'll, we'll come back to uh, Timber in a while. Uh, now uh, no okay fine. First on create starts, then on start has been called, then on resume has been called. Then what happens whenever I, well, like whenever if I press home button here or whenever I press whenever I press the home button or press the lock screen, you'll on pass and on start will get called, and then when I again when I open this will we'll have on resume called. So this kind of uh, you can see a lot of methods here on pass on stop on restart on start. So let me get uh, let me go through through that. So uh, okay now. Let me present the slide here. Like, um, hmm. okay. So, I think I, I I think my screen is visible here. Good. So um, now these are the activity lifecycle methods. So whenever you when you first the, whenever you open application for the first time, uh, the on create method will open. So that means when you have, you have when you want to do some stuff that when you actually uh, that have that one that have to happen when the application is being created, you write the on create method. 
and then after get created the activity will start launching in the screen so that that time you will go for the on start method yeah and then after starting uh, after starting like you will create the on on resume method now i have to like in the initiate the point here whenever you resume an whenever you create whenever you start an object that also means that you resume an act sorry whenever you start an activity that also mean that you resume an activity and whenever you create an activity that also means that you have started an activity and you have resumed an activity and uh, yeah and by the and yeah whenever you stop an activity that means you have also paused the activity and whenever you destroy the activity then you have, then you must have called on pause on stop then only on destroy this is the point number 1 point number 2 when you say an activity has been started that means that activity is visible in the foreground in a or, or like or in your screen so on screen and when you say an activity is resumed we uh, that means activity has focus you guys you guys might uh, wait you guys you guys might have a doubt what do you mean by focus so when i say focus i mean like for example yeah again like uh, let's come back to the, like the rams example so i seen that they want to open a pdf so when i open a pdf that means i get a pop up of showing like i mean when i get a pop up menu showing that which which, uh, which ads i can select to open the pdf file here in when when that happens i mean uh, when that happens the app is still on screen but the application doesn't have the focus the the the, the pop up window has the focus here so when uh, when you, when you when that happens the on pause method will be called and similarly whenever you press the sorry yeah whenever you whenever you this one uh, whenever then whenever you press the home button here that then the on stop method will be called so the on stop method will tell you I mean on stop method will be invoked whenever whenever you I mean whenever you go to the home button yeah, good so and then uh, now here when you when the on the on destroy method will be called when you have completely closed the application so when you have closed the application you the all the memory resources that which has been which it has been using can be free i mean can be freed and can be used for any other background purposes now uh, knowing the life cycle of an activity is actually really important because it if we if you if you code an app without like doing these basic stuff and all so you will cause bugs such as this and one more thing uh you mem your program might not your application might not be memory efficient in other words it might consume way more ram than is supposed to so that could cause a problem for the other applications and please take this as a rule of thumb here generally the android system will give preference uh, will give more will give preference for to allocate the resources for the application running in the foreground or the, than in the background so assume for example you have a assume that you have an you have two applications one application is just uh, okay assume you have two apps one app is like uh, one app is just uh, what can you say one app is uh, one one app is uh, computing calculating some complex stuff or some complex differential equation or some complex mathematics stuff and that you are allowing it to run in the background and you are using uh, you are using the map, I mean you are using a, a map application to to track where you are so now uh, the map application is in the foreground and while the 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 complex that max calculation application is in the background now when i say foreground or background i mean when app when application is foreground i mean that the application is on the screen so in that case the C, the the os the, i mean android will uh, will will tend to give more I mean will tend to allocate more resources for uh, for them i mean for the the map application because it has I mean because it's running in the foreground good so that is one thing one second yeah so that is one thing so that's how and uh, next we are going to talk about timber for logging so um timber is a unique library like we saw how to log uh, i mean we saw how to like how to log i mean we, we have we saw how to log messages in uh, for debugging purposes now for that instead that we can actually use a uh, special library called timber like you might have noticed here again unfortunately let me let me let me see the screen here let me change the screen okay so good so here uh, you guys could see the thing timber here right they are like yeah yeah there is this thing called the on create called and uh, there are something called on yeah 
on start call on resume call on pass call on stop call etc etc so now timber is actually a library that is used especially for logging purposes it makes uh, logging really convenient so what you what you have to do is first you must uh, first uh, to use this timber uh, library first you must go to gradle scripts and build on gradle and then we have to include a dependency here so once again Here you have to include dependency implementation com dot j quarter dot timber and uh, colon timber colon four point seven point one. That's the first step. And then then you have to create an up. Then you have to create a special class called an application class. Uh, application class is a, uh, it's a unique class that what can is that kind of has an in detail support the entire application. It is created internally, so it is. I mean, even each and every application has. I mean, each and every application has a special application class. It's created internally, and this is a class under users to know about the state of the application, like how I mean, what uh, what it does and what like what resources it has, and etc. etc. So uh, we are going to use Timber. We are going. To, uh, I mean, sorry. I mean, the Timber, the the library Timber will use the application class because. You need the timber needs to take control of the whole app so that you could log anywhere. I mean, anywhere in any any activity or any fragment here. So uh, what you have to do is you have to again uh, here. Mm, yeah. So anyways, first uh, what you have to do is we have to create a new uh, either uh, near I mean, clear uh, create a new class called clicker application. Or you have to create a new Kotlin class clicker application, which will uh, which will inherit the class application which has already been created, and then you have to override the on create method, and then you have to initialize here. They initialize by using timber dot plant timber dot debug tree. Again, the names are what can I say? The plant and the debug tree. It's, it's kind of like related to the word timber. So yeah, it's kind of cool and it's kind of unique here. Good. So uh, yeah, then then uh, yeah, yes. So that's one thing, and then what? Uh, what we are going to do is we have to go to Android manifest the XML, and then here you have to give an application name saying that like Android name clicker application. If you don't do this, you won't get any errors. But unfortunately, Timber won't log. The Timber cannot log anything if you cannot do this. Yeah, and then after doing this, you can go to main activity and you can see like Timber dot i uh, Timber dot i. And uh, like type the message. So instead, of, so here you, the one advantage of the using Timber library is you here in initially in the log. Uh, I mean initially when I when I if I want to use log uh, log dot i, I have to use a context here. So that may you can give anything, but I will give the activity name as the context here. Here Timber uh, Timber does this job, does the first argument already for you. You just need to type only the message. That's point number one. And point number two, now whenever you override these uh, method uh, method calls, like uh, these method calls, as I said before, they are used when like they are when used. Uh, I mean, they are called when you have to do something when the when the application state changes. For example, when it goes to maximum, or like for example, when it gets minimized, or when it uh, when it occupies full screen, or or whenever you send an intent. So. It uh, you need I mean so these methods are invoked and if you want to override this method you can type override fun on resume and then when whenever you override please make it a point to call its base class method by invoking super by writing super dot on resume yeah that's all so that's one thing about timber so yeah so and one more thing which I also want to include there's something called as on restart so yeah something called on restart. So you might ask, what's the difference between start and uh, on restart? So I have I said before, start is on start method is invoked, on start method is uh, invoked when you actually want to invoke something. Uh, when I mean, I, I mean sorry, on start is invoked when the application goes from the background to foreground. That means you the application comes to the screen after running from the background. Now on restart, I mean on start happen. I mean on start takes place every time. Including when you open it for the first time. So, so when uh, so when you open the app for the first time after closing everything and all. Again, if open on start will get invoked every time after right after on create. But on restart will get invoked only when only when it when only when it's running in the back only when it's already running in the background. So if you want to do stuff that so if you want to do stuff that uh, that that needs to be done 
only when the app is invoke from a, only when the app is brought to the foreground from the background and not when the app is first created we go for on restart so so now next when it comes to fragment life cycle that is kind of pretty similar like um, one second yeah, let me again present my slide so um, Let me present my slide here again. Okay, good. So, um, fragment life cycle methods are kind of similar to, I mean, what can I say, the activity method. Only thing is, we have two, two more methods called attach and uh, on detach. You have only two two extra methods, and there are some yeah, there are some extra methods called like on view created, on destroy view, and something like that. So we'll again we'll I'll say each and every method here. So <clears throat> good. Okay. So here what happens is that so again uh, on attach now here you, you first each and every fragment is associated with an activity as we have seen before. So on attach will get invoked whenever uh, whenever a fragment is attached to an associated with the user act when with you I mean attached to an activity here. Okay. On create is similar to the activity one. Now this one thing is called this on create view. So on create view is actually called to inflate the fragments layout. In other words, like you have a fragment layout in XML file. Uh, so that is used to inflate in the yeah use in to inflate i mean you use inflate the layout when i say inflate i means like take the xml layout and convert it to a view that the user can actually see now now there are one more there one more thing there one more method called on view created so on view created is actually called immediately after on create view as uh, on create view uh, yeah on view create is actually called immediately after on create view and uh, there's one more this this actually a small difference that we'll get back to it later and on start and on resume is uh, uh, it's kind of same same yeah now yeah so again so and on destroy on pass on stop are also same and on destroy view is called when the fragments view is no longer needed so if you want like again so again like when the fragments are no longer need when the fragment is no longer needed so on destroy view is called so that it could deallocate the resources so this process, this process deallocation when it is no longer needed, like the deallocation of uh, memory is uh, done when the activity of fragment no longer needed. So this is this thing is called as garbage collection mechanism. Yeah, good. this kind of garbage collection mechanism here. Good. So um, okay, now now we are going to see. Uh, now we are going to what can I say? Now we are going to now we are going to solve the mistake which we actually. Which you actually saw in the first place. We we are going to see what's the problem. Uh, sorry, yeah. So, second. Uh, Shakti. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, what are you supposed to be presenting? Uh, one second, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we are going to start with uh, life cycle. Yeah, I'm going to start with life cycle library, like in the next case. Cool. So, no, because right now all I can see is a blank screen, white oh, screen. I Okay, extremely sorry, extremely sorry. Um, I see one second. Let me. I'm just running this. I'm just constantly this Android Studio. Uh, like I have to. Okay. 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 Uh, so, uh, yeah, it'll it'll take a while for it'll take a while to build. So, meanwhile, guys, do you have any any doubts here? Guys. Okay. Um, any doubts, guys? Like you can uh, post your queries in the chat, or you can ask us. Like uh, you can unmute yourself and ask us. If you ha don't have any doubts, at least tell that. Shakti. 
शक्ति मॉडिफिकेशन <laughs> what we are going to do is uh one second yeah what we are going to do is we are going to add a timer we are going to add Let a timer. white screen one second one second i'm extremely sorry yeah okay we are going to now is it visible here yeah okay see now the ppt going, yeah okay fine uh, now we are going to add a now we are going to add a small timer which will take which will keep a track of how much time the app has been opened or how much time has the app has been used used but one thing which we have to note here is that we have to stop the application we have to stop the timer we have to pause the timer when the application goes into the background and we have to start it back when the application actually when we have to start it back when the application actually comes uh, when it actually uh, comes to full screen and full ground again so in when you uh, when you actually deal uh, when you when you deal uh, when you do such kind of situation here you have to stop the timer or you have to write the code to stop the timer in the on you know, i mean on stop uh, inside on stop method and when you want to when you want to run it back you have to start in the on create me- i mean sorry on i mean on uh, on start method so now that's kind of complex because if you if you for if 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 you forget if you forget to write the code in either part of the if you forget to stop and if you start it was stopping or if we stop it and if we forget to start it could lead some errors in uh, it could lead to some errors and some bugs and that's how usually bugs originate so we are going to start with life cycle library so that that kind of helps you reduce these kind of errors and all yeah so now we'll start uh, yeah now we'll start with um, life cycle libraries here good so okay now uh, okay let's again good so before that am i audible here yeah okay good 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 so yeah so now what does a life cycle library do it, again it's a ready made library here it's a ready made library here and we can we can split this life cycle library into three parts so again we'll consider one analogy here um we'll consider one analogy here or no well, let me say directly so there are three things called life cycle owners life cycle class and life cycle observer same so life cycle owners are the things which actually have a life cycle so when i say uh, so when i say life cycle owners i mean activities and fragments they have a life cycle life cycle class is a class which actually kind of like uh, which kind of gets an info about this life cycle owners and life cycle observers are kind of like uh, life cycle observers are responsible for observing when observing the activity of fragments when their life cycle changes or when the states changes and implement the or do the necessary stuff that you have to do so anyways so in like again to start uh, what you have to do is i think i, I think my android studio like the interface is visible here no okay fine i then i then I'll change it again so okay good so again now it's again uh, now it's visible i guess okay so what what we have to do is number one there is this thing called desert timer dot uh, desert timer dot kotlin file yeah here here we here we are going to in mean here we are going to inherit this life cycle observer class if you guys might wonder like uh, i'm sorry yeah and you pass a life cycle object here now one more thing which i have to think uh, one thing i have to say is uh, all activities and fragment classes uh, in inherit life cycle as default so you guys need not worry when you actually does so now um look here yes, so what happens is now let us see so now we are going to include annotation here so on life cycle event when the life cycle is starting so life cycle dot event dot on start so when it's starting then we are going to start a timer here so again when we are going to stop the when when we are going when the app application goes into 
uh, our background then we are going to when then we are going to stop the event then we are going to stop the event and then when they will stop the timer hence we are going to we are invoking the method called stop timer so that is the and so this kind of makes it actually easier here this kind of actually makes it easier here and for and now and then you have to modify the main activity in in this way here uh, so yeah here uh, in the on create method uh, once again yeah, let me hear this is line here okay now in the on create method there is yeah there is piece of code which we will have to actually have right so yeah desert timer is equal to desert timer by in brackets this dot life cycle so again so you are going uh, since i said the the uh, since i said the main activity class will invoke i mean as a in, in implements the life cycle class by default it has this uh, this is ready made object or life cycle uh, life cycle object by the super class uh, which will contain the information about the state of this activity so we are going to pass as an argument to this class here so that the desert timer class could manage the main activities and stuff yeah so uh, that's one thing and next we are going to saw we are going to see the problem that we actually have been uh, getting so now before that i'll tell you i'll tell one thing so right now when you actually start when you when you actually saw the problem when the phone was actually tilted from vertical to horizontal when when we when it tilted to landscape mode you saw that all the numbers were disappearing if i'm not wrong so now we are going to solve the problem here so what happens is that whenever you are going when you are when you are tilting the phone from like from portrait to landscape mode the problem that actually happens is that now the there's a sudden change in the entire layout now the now the android i mean the android os will respond to that or the application will kind of respond to that by removing all the activity and creating the activity from scratch so that's the main reason in other words the on create method the on destroy method will get called again the on create method will call so uh, it mean to to create the layout in the uh, to create layout as uh, i mean as in the uh, landscape mode so now and one more thing uh, generally one more thing is that whenever you close an application whenever you close an application again the amount will get dis amount will disappear that's because whenever you like uh, yeah whenever you try to close or whenever you try to close the application mean, whenever whenever the application gets closed in the background so what happens then android will try to save state of most of the will try to save state like uh, will try its level best to save some of the state that has been some of data of the application that it was there while running but to specify user defined data such as this amount and stuff and all you need to include extra lines of code in order to do so that's why we have this special method called on save instance state okay. now this on save instance state actually again as the comments as the comment say it is called when the user navigates away from the app and might come back so when you when you actually save an instance state what happens is that you uh, you can uh, in in this method you can actually uh, in you, you can actually do the stuff if you want i mean you can write the uh, i mean you can uh, you have to include code here if you want to save something when when you, when you close or when when you want to what can it when, when you want to navigate away from the app and might come back as said so now here we have something called as out state now uh, now out state is actually a bundle object so bundle is a uh, chunk of data that is that will get stored in that will get stored in your ram that gets stored in your ram whenever the application is is in background where or when the player for gets for moves from for i mean for for foreground to background so again so out state so how how it works now the data which you want to store is stored as a key value pairs so again so for example if i want to store a float value out i'll type out state dot put float out state dot put float uh out state dot put float and then in the uh, in then in the we have to put a key as a string so key is something like some value and then uh, for the value we give a float like 12.5 yeah 6 so this is how you actually store a value in um, this is how you actually store a value in a uh, 
in yeah in in a bundle here so after you have to include this uh, you have to include some data in a bundle the data can be anything it can be float or it can be int or it can be even a string yeah you have to use, you have to use the syntax similar here like put float put string and uh, put char etc so so what happens is that whenever uh, whenever you minimize the application and when you say minimize i mean you press the home screen or when the app goes in the background the data which you mention in this code will be saved and will be restored when i mean will be saved so that you can restore whenever whenever the life i mean whenever it opens again again i'll tell you where it's actually restored here but okay now here uh, yeah on the on create on the on create we can see a code like if saved instance state is not equal to null okay now the saved instance state when if if the application has been completely closed and is in this opening for the first time that means if it is not minimizing then the the object will be null the save state in the state will object be null because there's nothing will be saved so if if it is not null that means the application has just been minimized so in that case we can uh, yeah we can get the object by i mean we can get the values by passing the same key value so again here for example uh, if i if, if i give uh, okay yeah good so if i want to get the value back so again uh, value val value back the old value which i actually stored here okay uh, here i can write saved instance state dot get float okay i have to use the same string which i actually used for it so uh, key is will be some value some value and then here you are going to pass second argument the second argument's purpose is that if you assume that a value does not exist for this key or like there's no value that is stored in the name of some value then you will you have to return a default value so that default value is 0.0, .0 or anything which you actually prefer so that's how we actually kind of man I mean, uh, that's how we actually kind of manage the saved instance state yeah so and then now uh, now yeah when i say now uh, yeah now yeah we we'll, let's come back to configuration change yeah as i said before configuration change is something that happens when the entire layout needs to be like removed and and uh, what can i say removed and uh, start created from first or when the entire activity has to be destroyed and you have to be created from first so in such case when you're tilting the device on a portrait mode to la landscape mode so uh po so uh, yeah portrait mode to landscape mode so in that case what happens is that the entire activity gets destroyed and it is created from first so now let me till uh, yeah, be, before i present my phone uh, let me see so what happens is that when uh, whenever whenever uh, that whenever the user navigates away from the application whenever the user destroys an activity now the save instance state get in in uh, invoked and all the values like the the desserts sold and uh, the yeah the number of desserts and the the cost or the the amount uh, gained is all stored in the ram and then whenever the activity is created again whenever it's created again thus they are actually restored here yeah so that's how it works again let me present the uh, application again Uh, again, yeah. Mm. I think you can run again. Okay. Now that has been done. I'll present my phone here. One second, like my device got disconnected. Let me. Okay, good. So, uh, okay. So uh, that's uh, yeah. Now I think you guys can see my phone phone here, right? My phone screen. So. So whenever I click, you, you you guys can see the money increasing. But whenever when I tilt the phone now, again you can see the values have not been changed. It is intact. So what happens again? So what happens is that when the activity needs to be created 
like from scratch the existing values which i have mentioned in the when which i mentioned the functions are stored and then they are restored back when the layout is actually created from first so this is how you actually this is how the, the problem gets solved so so guys yeah if you have any doubts here guys if you have uh, if you have ram am i audible here yeah ra yeah fine so so if you have i think doubts, are we done with today's session yeah yeah i think we are done with today's session okay and one more thing which i would like to ask a small opinion from you guys so guys are you fine with live coding or do you need some more uh, the, like uh, sorry do you need like are you fine i mean do you want live coding or do you want uh, what can i say like is it fine is the are the, are the current sessions fine for anyone comment or yeah please uh, tell your thoughts to us so, so we can improve further Yeah, actually today's session was fine, but it's too much of information. So if you kindly upload that uh, recording session, it will be easier for us to go yeah, through. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, definitely. And yeah, it, the problem is it takes a while to process the video. Like it kind of takes process like a uh, three to four hours. So that's that's the problem which I'm actually facing. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll definitely upload as soon as we can. Yeah, the problem is we'll be uh, recording the session with. Uh, Uh, 1080p quality. So the resultant file will be around uh, 5 GB is uh, worth of uh, mem. I mean data. Yeah. So uh, to process all 